Hello and good evening, folks, and welcome aboard once again another live production of the Canadian Emore Sports Network and the NASCAR series, powered by Kyle's Fried Chicken and Barbecue Season 5. We're now here, round 2 of 22 for the fifth season of Operation, coming off round 1 last week at the Daytona International Speedway. We have now entered a two-week West Coast swing beginning in the Sin City, the diamond in the desert known as Las Vegas Motor Speedway. It is the Piping Kettle 200, round 2 of 22 for Season 5. And now as we go track side here to the broadcast booth there we go and i guess for those that are into baseball that makes sense he's probably not the right guy to be showcasing around vegas at the moment though so let's try that again eh, well kind of at least he was there yeah okay makes, yeah sure this is right back to uh professional and normal but welcome to the broadcast booth here once again for the canadian more sports network i'm your play-by-play -play guy regan mccauley from charlton prince Edward island on the other side he's that's the wrong way on the other side he's been here since the very beginning it is jordy Kerr from alberta canada jordy coming off a crazy season opener at the daytona international speedway the fifth annual gtr 250 won by none other than the 2022 series champion ty higginbottom in the number 97 tornado alley e-racing toyota it was quite the performance for tornado alley overall i mean all three cars finishing inside the top five higginbottom gets the win magrin falling just short uh, off a last lap pass down the back straight away but still comes home on the bottom end of the podium and adam wilson the rookie comes home with a fifth place finish so not too shabby of a start for tornado alley which a team that upgraded from one to three drivers uh for this season higginbottom being on his own back in season four but not quite not the or not a bad start for the number 97 again uh an okay transition to i racing back last season for him but he's really started to set things up and it's looking like he could be a prime contender in the chase for the fifth annual earl ross cup yeah, I mean, hard to argue with one and done, right, in terms of locking up that playoff spot straight away. It was something that, you know, you mentioned it in the post-race interview last week. It was something that he wanted to get taken care of straight away and wanted to get out to a hot start. And, yeah, I mean, he kept the car clean. That was something that we said was going to be a big deal, especially given, you know, all the activity, especially in Stage 2. A lot of cautions there, but yeah, Higginbotham was able to kind of keep things, you know, pretty steady for the most part and was able to pick the right move on the final lap on the back straight and yeah, ultimately made it stick. And, you know, as I said, hard to imagine a better start for him, especially when you consider 16 out of 20 stage points worked in there as well. So all in all, a great evening for the 97. Absolutely. And for a bunch of uh, other guys, too, there were uh, some other drivers who, I guess, quote unquote, got victories in these stages, not the race win exactly, but had a little bit more unfortunate luck with how the whole race played out. And that's when we're finally going to get to the race results here for the first time. I mean, that's pretty much going to be the way it is from now onward. Race results, driver standings, rookie standings. That's the way it's always been every single season. But race round two now onward, finally going to get to some of these. Ty Higginbottom, of course, the number 97 getting the victory justin belmonte the defending gtr 250 champion well at least not anymore now that we have uh this year's 250 done higginbottom now the defending champion but belmonte the 2023 winner of the race comes up just short after qualifying in the give me a second here there we go qualifying in the third position so the number six falling just short but still starting off the season strong but for a guy like him, you definitely know that he would want to, he would love to get a victory, of course. Uh, CD Magrum, like I said earlier, comes up short as well. But uh, the other Tornado Alley driver finishing on the bottom end of the podium after qualifying fifth. The number 17 of veteran Corbin McCauley qualified in 15th, but was able to make his way up and persevere through a couple of instants to come home with a fourth place finish. Adam Wilson, I also mentioned, qualified fourth, finished fifth. So a top five for. Um, one of uh, many uh, talented rookies here within the NASCAR series for season five. Jose Mercado finishes in sixth after qualifying 13th. Trevor Bins, yet again, another rookie, finishes in seventh after qualifying 11th. Hunter Young in the number 77 qualified eighth, finished eighth. 
Kyle Noel qualified 18th and came home in 9th and then rounding at the top 10. He got a stage win, uh, but wasn't able to uh, keep up the victory stuff right there after qualifying second on the front row alongside Andy Hurdle. He finishes in 10th, rounding at the top 10. Tom Janikowski and Jason Butler rounding out the lead lap cars in 11th and 12th. Darcy Ford, one lap down, finishes in the 13th position, the 2021 champion still hasn't had much luck ever since he previously won the 250. Charlie Sears qualified 16th, ended up finishing 14th. Not too bad, although he, he his race, a lot of bad luck in that one. A lot of incidents involved in that, but again, it's a, uh, like I'll say, it was the first race for uh, nine rookies here within the series. Again, it's it's kind of hard to uh, prove all uh, how talented they all truly are uh, with a race at Daytona, which is why again we have like a 17 race stretch or so where we're going to be going to every going to tracks that are not you know all drafting and you know super speedways and such. So we're really heading into a stretch where the rookies can really show off how talented they really are, show off the race craft that they truly have. Moving on now, continuing on from 15th onward, the pole setter Andy Hurdle. Unfortunately, five laps down in 15th. Mark Ouellette qualified 12th, finished 16th, eight laps down. Jason Heaney qualified 10th, finished 17th. Steve Escoffier, Mason Tomlinson, who also won a stage, but was caught off, caught up in an incident just after winning the uh, second stage. Jared Ireland qualified 21st, finished 20th, involved in an incident. So was Jordan Kalinian, uh, the rookie who won the Atlanta Clash a couple weeks back. And Ryan O'Toole did not get the start here in the GTR 250 last week, but it looks like he will participate in his first ever points award in Canadian Motorsports Sports Network NASCAR Series race here tonight at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Jordy. Any overall thoughts here on the race results from last week at Daytona? I mean, it's kind of like I said off the hop. It seemed like a whole lot of the drama happened early. It was nice to actually get a clean finish out of it for the most part. I'm sure uh, there might be a couple of guys who were in that lead pack who might beg to differ on that. But I mean, I think the biggest thing about how things went last week is do you recall how many lead changes there were? They had to be close to 20, meaning you're seeing a ton of parity in the field. So I think last week, yes, you can say, sure, it's Daytona. But the fact that we had a number of different guys in contention, a number of different possible scenarios, I mean, it's kind of hard to argue with the fact that we're off to a pretty good start here. And I would expect things to kind of follow along that trend line here moving forward. Indeed so, and now we move on here to the driver standings after the GTR 250, where Ty Higginbottom leading the way. I mean, of course, he's the only driver to have officially clinched a spot into the fifth annual Earl Ross Cup playoffs. And then the rest of the way, Justin Belmonte, C.D. Magra, Mike Marini, Adam Wilson, and Marini Wilson tied for fourth, Corbin McCauley sixth, Darcy Ford and Hunter Young tied for seventh, Jose Mercado ninth, Andy Hurdle rounding at the top ten, and then right there at the bottom of of the playoff grid so far, Mason Tomlinson and Trevor Bins, pair of rookies. Kyle Noel, Tom Janikowski just outside, on the outside looking in. Jason Butler, Jordan Kalinian, Charlie Sears in there as well. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to really gauge an overall uh, look at the, you know, come up with a good opinion out of the driver's standings. As, as I said earlier, we're coming off a super speedway race. Not exactly the best way to truly prove uh, the skills of every single rookie here within the series. This is why from Las Vegas onward, we're really going to get the proof moving forward. I mean, I guess you got to agree, Jordy. It's kind of hard to tell how things are really going to look moving forward from here now. Yeah, I mean, it's effectively the warm-ups are over. This is where things really hit the road, so to speak. Kind of like the uh, that early time trial in the Tour de France. Like All it does is establish a leader basically. And now everyone's going to be kind of jockeying for position over the next three and a half months to ultimately try and find their way into that top 12. Again, having that condensed playoff fields, you know, I think that's ultimately going to make things a lot more interesting as well. And again, given the depth of field that we've seen so far, I think it's just going to make for even more interesting racing here as we progress through the regular season. 
And now as we move on here to the rookie point standings after Daytona, where just one little correction I have to make, Tomlinson actually did not get the second best finish at Daytona. It was actually Trevor Binns. I don't know how I missed that. He's actually second in the rookie standings, but he did not get the second best finish at Daytona. That was Trevor Binns. Apologies on that one. But anyways, Adam Wilson leading the rookie point standings, 44 points. And then 13 and 14 back are Tomlinson and Trevor Binns. Jordan Kalinian and Charlie Sears rounding at the top five. So Adam Wilson's got a pretty decent lead here so far. But like I said with the driver point standings, it's knowing like most of the rookies, like only two rookies finish inside the top 10 in the GTR 250. Literally everyone else finished outside and was involved in basically something. And even like Wilson uh, from time to time had to kind of get around some stuff as well. So, I mean, again, hard to say right now, but I mean, Adam Wilson still took advantage with that good finish. So did Trevor Binns as well. Although the extra points did really help out Wilson and also Tomlinson as well for that stage win, which again, stage wins giving you that one extra playoff point and that only help him moving forward. But so for Adam Wilson leading the way, again, not really a whole lot to say after Daytona. We'll have a lot better of an idea of all this moving on between tonight and onward. Yeah, I mean, kind of like you said, like stage points certainly helped in Adam Wilson's case, of course, winning the second duel at Daytona certainly didn't help or hurt his cause either. That was an additional five points right off the hop. But I mean, he was able to pick up the fifth place finish. Ultimately, you have to be in it to win it. How many times do we say that or some cliched variation of that and you know it was one week and we've already seen that kind of come into play and i say i think the fact that we're kind of looking at guys who've had decent results here so far look out for the next you know 14 weeks i'd say at least a few of these guys will wind up in the 12 Indeed. So now moving on from there, let's now head into a preview for tonight and onward for the rest of the season. The 2024 NASCAR season schedule here. We're coming off of Daytona March 19th. We're now here today, tonight at Las Vegas on March 26th. It's a two race West Coast swing at at, uh, Las Vegas and Phoenix. And then again, from uh, tonight onward, it's about, I think, a 17-race stretch or so until we get to the next Super Speedway, but 14 more races until we conclude the regular season and get underway with the fifth annual Earl Ross Cup playoffs. So, again, to begin this West Coast swing, we're here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Diamond in the Desert. That's the nickname that they give to the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, also known as the Sin City, a 1.5-mile trial racetrack. Four turns, uh, the race laps and race length we can completely ignore. Ah. Uh, um. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you might have been like celebrating Pi Day a couple weeks too late or something. I was looking for a decimal point somewhere. Unfortunately, no. Okay. Well, I, I've got nothing for that. <laughs> But yes, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, 1.5 mile D-shaped trioval intermediate oval with 20 degree graduated banking, about 9 to 12 degrees of banking on the uh, trioval front stretch and also the back straightaway as well. It's hosted NASCAR's top stock car series for quite some time. It's also hosted some open wheel racing in the past as well. Uh, it was originally constructed in 1996. Uh, had a major renovation back in 2006 with revamps to the banking and uh, the degrees went from 12 to 20. And other than that, uh, coming off of uh, two races that we had at Las Vegas last season in season four, we had uh, Las Vegas four, I believe it was round three, and then we had one in the playoffs as well, getting with Corbin McCauley and Jared Ireland getting the wins. If we go off of the first race last year, then McCauley got the job done with the pole and the win leading 53 laps. Uh, The next returning driver, the next best finish for a returning driver was Andy Hurdle in fifth. Ty Higginbottom starting ninth, finishing sixth. The winner from last week's GTR 250. If you flip those two numbers, then that's the uh, favorite word of uh, the other commentator. (laughs) Why are you throwing me under the bus like this? Let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And so the race analysis for tonight is going to be 134 laps here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Stages 1 and 2 are 40 laps each. Final stage will be 54 laps. Pit road speed at 50 miles per hour. Expect every fuel window, again, depending on the cautions and such, to be about 26 to 31 laps or so. And uh, again, you know, the first of many races that are uh, not at super speedways. This will, again, be the first race where we're going to see a lot of strategies come into play as there are four extra tire sets that drivers are going to be given throughout this race. The decision from uh, the admins here at the Canadian New More Sports Network uh, trying to imply kind of an exciting and intense racing product while at the same time uh, making drivers really have to risk it because I believe it was last season where we had, I think it was five extra and we took it down to four. And so now this time around drivers are going to have to get, make it really, it's going to, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of risky decisions that are going to be made tonight. Some drivers might have to go on the same set for maybe an entire stage. Who knows? We might get to the end and it might be a matter of if we get a late caution, it could be old versus new tires. Some guys might try to gamble and go for the win at the end. It's really, again, the first of many races where we're going to see race craft and strategies really come into play here, Jordy. And I know like, for example, uh, Jared Ireland was someone that did that in last year's playoff race where, uh, Again, a guy that was really, really strong when it came to strategies, especially towards uh, the end of races. And that's why he was able to pass Corbin McCauley late and steal the win and clinch his way into the Earl Ross Cup uh, championship race at uh, Homestead Miami Speedway. So is Ireland going to repeat that or maybe we're going to get someone else that's going to be like him again, too, with the talented rookie class that we have here for season five of the NASCAR series powered by Kyle's Fried Chicken and Barbecue. Anything's possible. Yeah, I don't think you can rule anybody out. That was a great point you made on the tire strategy. I love the fact that we're kind of limiting that margin for error, so to speak. Having that one last set of tires, as you say, guys have to kind of think about it here now in terms of, you know, what things look like going toward the end of the race, whether you kind of extend a stint, try to become a bit of a tire whisperer midway through. You know, there's lots of different options and that could open some doors for a lot of guys would not be surprised if we have a, you know, I don't want to say a surprise winner, but someone who might not be the first on the tip of the tongue. And so right now, single car qualifying is currently underway. Uh, I, I'm not surprised one bit by the guy who is currently at the top of the board, but I can confirm to you uh, right now, we have all 22 drivers on the season five roster here tonight. So Rhino tool will be making his, uh, I guess, regular season debut here within the NASCAR series. Um, we had 21 drivers at Daytona last week. So that's on one more, but again, Jordy, we have a full roster here tonight. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, looking forward to it. And, you know, it's even with the, you know, the clash and the duels, I think this is the first full field event we've actually had. So, yes. you know, we've gotten sort of a taste of what drivers are capable of, especially in kind of the heat of the battle. But, yeah, now we kind of get to see a different element, whether it's, as I mentioned earlier, the strategic side of things or... Again, maybe there's a trick up the sleeve of some of the drivers that you know, we'll find out over the course of the evening. I mean, Vegas would be the place to do it, right? Indeed. So it looks like everybody except one driver has pulled off a lap so far. Looking like a couple rookies up there pretty fast up inside the top five. Um... Ooh, one driver again, very close to the top right there. Um, not a single driver is at least a second back from the leader. Uh, most drivers are about five, about five tenths back behind first place. So, so far, so good. Looking, it looking like it, it's looking like it could be a close race, at least from the start. Again, restarts here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway tend to be what's most popular about the track, especially with the uh, next gen. Uh, and it's an inter intermediate package. Again, the car known for being just absolutely fantastic on the uh, bigger tracks, the intermediates specifically. Man, oh man, all these updates that you're giving me here, not being able to see a leaderboard, 
it kind of reminds me or makes me feel like I'm playing my favorite Price is Right game, Cliffhanger. Well, we're in Las Vegas. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't <laughs> want to go all in just yet. We'll see if a driver goes all in to get the job done here tonight at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Uh, we'll see if someone gets the win and gets to uh, absolutely destroy their wallet at one of the uh, casinos way down the highway. Hey, we want the audience to win as much as anybody else, if and not more too. than anybody else. <laughs> Be responsible, folks. And so, with all that being said, I'm gonna we're gonna go track side here, just go into a bit of a loop, and we'll get right back to you. As I'm gonna send a quick message here through race control, get these engines fired up, so we can go racing for the first time at an intermediate track here, or a non-super speedway here in season five of the Canadian New More Sports Network NASCAR Series, powered by Kyle's Fried Chicken and Barbecue. Stay tuned. The Pipe and Kettle 200 Las Vegas Motor Speedway is about to get underway in just a couple minutes' time. Stay tuned. Just in your quest. And so the I yeah, so the engines have been fired up here. <laughs> oh man. What a start. Looking for a cam cameo in the hangover four. <laughs> uh basically. I mean, remember what I said about Corbin a while back, uh, and uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let's get to the starting grid for tonight's Pipey Kettle 200. On the front row, we have the number 17 of last year's winner of the first Las Vegas race. Again, there were two back in 2023. It's the number 17 Chevrolet of Corb and Macaulay. Alongside him, it's the number 0 Toyota, not 00. zero. That's an iRacing glitch. It is Jordan Kalinian in the Toyota from Salisbury, North Carolina, the Atlanta Clash winner. And now moving on to row two, where we have the number 21 Tornado Alley Toyota of Adam Wilson from Laurel, Delaware. Alongside him, the number nine Toyota of a fellow rookie in Jason Heaney for Koopa's Racing from Altoona, Wisconsin. 
All right, moving on to row three and rounding out the top five is the number one Toyota Tornado Alley Racing of CD Mangrum out of Atlanta, Georgia. Alongside him on row three, last year's second Vegas race winner, as you mentioned in the pre-race, the number 13 Chevy of Jared Ireland out of Eudora, Kansas. Moving on to row four now, we head to St. Catharines, Ontario, where we find the number 77 Ford of Hunter Young starting in seventh, 777, go figure. Uh, and, <laughs> oh, good Lord, there's another seven, that being the Chevy of Andy Hurdle. And yeah, he'll be starting eighth, and he's from the Gem City, Dayton, Ohio. Moving on now to the bottom of the top 10, where we have the winner from last week's GTR 250. It's the number 97 Toyota of Ty Higginbottom. It's a, it's an all, it's a champion's row here. The number 64 Chevrolet of a, also a former GTR 250 winner and a NASCAR series champion. It is Darcy Ford for 519 e-racing from Harrington, Prince, Edward Island. Row six has the number 41 Ford of Jose Mercado for GTR from uh, Kissimmee, Florida, however you want to say it. Uh, and alongside him, sophomore number 15 Toyota for Storm Surge Esports from Wendell, North Carolina, it is Kyle Knoll. And moving on to row seven, we've got the number zero four of Mason Tomlinson. I promise we do have a picture for him here at some point. We will eventually. And yes, I think we were getting to that. And yeah, I didn't quite pick up on a hometown here. Anyway, I won't waste too much time. He's starting 13th. And he's got Trevor Bins for company in the number 33 Toyota. And he joins us from Winter Haven, Florida, I do believe. That is correct. Tomlinson's from Eudora, Kansas. We now move on to row eight, where we have the number six Ford of Justin Bell Monty. Finished runner up in last week's GTR 250 alongside him. The number 93 Chevrolet of Tom Janikowski from Appleton, Wisconsin. And moving on to row nine, where we have the number two, 32 Rookie Chevrolet of Charlie Sears for 499 Racing from Charlottesville, Virginia. Alongside him, the number 10 Chevrolet of Jason Butler for 519E Racing from London, Ontario. And we move on to row 10. We head to Thunder Bay, Ontario for the number 12 Toyota of Mike Marini. And on his outside, starting 20th, the number 63 of Steve Escoffier from Fairborn, Ohio, driving a Ford. And row 11, is there an 11? There is an 11. Last one. And yeah, we find the number 80 Toyota of Mark Ouellette driving for Coopers Racing out of Georgina, Ontario. And on his outside, joining us from Portland, Oregon, the number 16 Chevy of Ryan O'Toole. And so that is the starting grid for the 2024 Piping Kettle 200 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. There is your full 22 car field down the back straightaway pace car lights are off a quick look at the weather info for tonight or today however you want to put it if it's either real life or based on the game weather clear conditions 23 tra 23 degrees celsius track temperature humidity at just about almost 23 percent wind speed 30 kilometers per hour in a northwest wind direction and the pace car is about to go in a direction towards the pit lane flagman's got the green flag in hand pace cars off corporate mccauley jordan kalinian will lead the field to green Ladies and gentlemen, in the Sin City, the pros. And pretty clean start here by the looks of things so far. Find some wood to knock on, of course. And yeah, looks like 17 still getting used to that green paint scheme. But he's taking the green and he has run with it so far. So far, so good for the number 17 Bolger Motorsports and Kawasaki Chevrolet. Adam Wilson, the number 21 Tornado Alley Toyota, following in behind in second place with Sidney Magram in third. Ty Higginbottom back in fifth. So the Tornado Alley guys looking to continue that uh, all three guys in the top five streak. Jordan Kalinian falling back to third, now side by side with CD Magram. A little jostling back and forth down the back straightaway now on lap two. Almost everybody has gone about single file now. As I say that, Jared Ireland goes to the inside of Jason Heaney, who has fallen all the way back to ninth here on lap three. Justin Belmonte all the way towards the back about nine, almost 10 seconds back of everybody. Don't know exactly what may have happened there. 
Yeah, it's a little bit of a strange start. I wonder if that's maybe by design here, but that seems fairly early to drop back. We'll have to monitor that one closely. CD Mangrum, Jordan Kalinian side by side for the bottom of the podium. Kalinian getting the better run down the middle lane. Magrum slides up from the inside and will clear in behind the zero. Jose Mercado down low on Ireland, a winner of Las Vegas, the uh, playoff race last year. Looking to improve again from a disappointing result in last week's GTR 250. But again, super speed race, and now a bunch of races where he can really apply his uh, strategies, which again, we saw it last year. A lot of the races that he won really came down to strategies towards the end of races in the third and final stages. We saw it at Kansas. We saw it at Las Vegas. It's the reason why he was able to make it into the championship four. Yeah, I mean, he absolutely found his form in the second half of the season, and this was definitely another kind of crowning achievement for him. As you mentioned, got him into championship contention toward the end of the season. And yeah, don't be surprised. It's like he's a guy who's proven to be good on intermediates and would not be surprised if we find Ireland a factor here later tonight. Almost everybody now single file throughout the field. 17 still leading the way, but he has not been able to pull ahead by uh, too far. As again, he's got two rookies following him behind. Magram and Higginbottom almost, maybe they'll team back up together to get up to Wilson and have a bit of a Tornado Alley invasion up towards the front. Yeah, Wilson, of course, you know your home improvement terminology. You usually see him peering over the fence, but you've got him in full view here to start. Ireland way up high, almost Kyle Larson style with Hunter Young impressing so far. Currently in the sixth position, still down to the inside of the number 13. Jose Mercado following in behind, a little bit of a, little bit of a pack in behind them. I mean, again, to the 77. Looked like he was in for a potential, another Super Speedway upset win. Upset win uh, last week, but unfortunately contact with CD Magrum down the back straightaway. Didn't allow that to happen. But here's the thing though, if it happens twice, like how long can we keep calling it an upset win? It's a guy who's in the right place at the right time. Mason Tomlinson trying to squeeze now down underneath the 77 or what looks to be a, again, triple sevens on the side. The way the number is for Hunter Young. Now Jose Mercado looked like it could have been almost three wide there, but Young has fallen back there anyways. There's Darcy Ford, the number 64, piping kettle Chevrolet. Now ahead. Yeah, God. notably that's our uh, 2021 season champion, season finale, won it in Vegas. Indeed. And so, yeah, in 2021, he won the GTR 250. He won the season finale in Las Vegas. He won the championship. Uh, maybe try to repeat a little bit of that. He wasn't able to get the 250 win, but there's still plenty of time to perhaps get a win again at Las Vegas and maybe even still go for that championship again last season. Not the greatest of transitions to the iRacing platform, but he steadily progressed as the season went on. And so far through season five, he has shown plenty of speed, especially again back at the Atlanta Clash and during his respective Daytona Duel race. The guy just needs a little bit more of that lucky head back in the NASCAR He 5 era. Yeah, and you feel like it's coming, like, how many times have we kind of talked about him potentially being an X-Factor going into this Season 5 with a little bit more iRacing experience under the belt? Uh, he's a guy that's you know proven to be competitive wherever he's driven. It's just a matter of him getting the handle of it, I would say, as much as anything else. did look pretty fast I recall back in uh, I believe it was the first Las Vegas race last season but uh, unfortunately was caught up in an incident down the back straightaway I believe he was still able to save the car he hit the he hit the outside wall 
think he was still able to keep the car straight anyways. But yeah, again, he shows that speed on the intermediates. I believe he showed it at a track like Charlotte as well, but again, just needs to have that car clean and ready to finish at the checkered flag. Meanwhile, still up front, the 17 just, the 21 and the 0 are just not letting him get away. And I think, you know, the fact that he's got a little bit of the competition up there from two first years in the series, no less, in Wilson and Kalinian, I think it's game on. We're saying this in race two, absolutely, like, nobody's gonna kind of give anything up here right from the jump. Looks like they're going to get side-by-side side for the second position here. Kalinian trying to use that high-line momentum. Mid to high-line momentum, I should say. Adam Wilson down low. Will the zero be able to clear the way? Yes, he will. Now he's going to charge towards the 17. Make a battle happen here. Again, the zero reportedly coming in with a high I rating. So really trying to match up with the 17 and make a battle for the ages for season five. And he's definitely got that potential to show it off. And now you can see, too, Jared Ireland. Again, winner of Vegas last year. He's starting to catch his way up. He's now in the fourth position. And again, 16 laps in. Looks like maybe he was able to save the tires just, just a little bit better. Yeah, I don't think we're allowed to be surprised by this, are we? Oh, again, no, no. Given how we've kind of... Uh, what's the proper ceremony we're looking for? blown a little smoke here i guess in terms of <laughs> ireland's intermediate prowess yeah not a surprise in the very least to see him up and contending early on higginbottom is still holding firm in fifth cd megram back in six there's quite the gap in between by about Almost two seconds with Darcy Ford leading the charge ahead of uh, kind of a pack in behind him. The number 04 X Alto Chevrolet of Mason Tomlinson in eighth. Side by side between Trevor Bins and Jose Mercado for 10th. And how about this for the number 32 499 racing uh, Chevrolet of Charlie Sears looking to really find some redemption after a horrible luck at the 250 last week. Yeah, just kind of getting the, uh, I don't want to call it opening race jitters, but certainly, you know, a guy who wants to make an impression, but he wants to do it the right way. He was, you know, very accountable in terms of some of the stuff that happened over the course of the evening. He's a guy that, you know, we've spoken about it before, is certainly more comfortable and adept on the open wheel side of things, but... He's a guy that over the course of the season, I think you'll find makes a significant progression as we go. Oh, and it looks like there's potent. Yeah, I just clicked on a driver here and they're not showing up. Jason Heaton in the number nine is out of this race. Very unclear what may have happened there. Well, we stayed green, so the suspicion would be a disconnection. That'd be the first thought. Especially if you go back to, oh, no, I was about to label him for a situation at the Clash that was actually Adam Wilson. So my apologies to both of those two. But, uh, yeah, hopefully oh, here's he's the, all right. Here's the pit window. Yeah, again, guys kind of splitting the stage in half here, it would appear. I was going to go for a uh, uh, replay all the way back to see if maybe we could have seen what, if anything, did happen. But uh, no time for that now as we got a couple Tornado Alley guys and Jose Mercado on pit road. Very quick stops. And here comes the 04 Tomlinson as well. Yeah, and coming in on your own, not nearly as punitive at Las Vegas as it was at Daytona, however many times we talked about that last week. You got time to kind of make things up, obviously. You know, a few more laps to work with as well. But, yeah, we'll see kind of our first taste of what the old strategic picture looks like. Darcy Ford now makes his way down the pit lane. Lap 23 of 134. Again, a reminder that uh, stages 1 and 2 are both 40 laps each. So we're well over halfway now. 
through stage one. We'll see what the 64 does, carrying on the uh, race title sponsor, of course. Again, Piping Kettle, Soup Co., thank you very much for being the title sponsor of uh, multiple races for this fifth season of NASCAR racing. And how about this? The 13 got past the 21, now trying to get past Kalini and make his way up to the 17. McCauley's got a, uh, a familiar face approaching him from behind and may or not, may not be a little bit of PTSD from a couple of finishes last season. Yeah, potentially. And now that brings up the other question. Whenever those finishes came into play, there was always a question after that first green flag pit stop. So we'll see if that's potentially been corrected from one season to the next as well. Ryan O'Toole now making his way down the pit lane. Uh, as I was going to say about Piping Kettle, they'll also be sponsoring the uh, sure, uh, the May 14th race at Charlotte Motor Speedway, uh, the half Coca-Cola 600, basically, and then also uh, the 250 at Talladega Super Speedway on July 30th, which is, that's when our next Super Speedway race. Thank goodness it's another while until then, at least the drivers, I imagine, would agree. Maybe, well, I guess everyone would agree. Yeah, I think... You know, those races obviously present their own uh, challenges, but I think the way things are structured this year, I like the fact that it's going to take a complete driver to be able to get the job done. Indeed so, and we're really seeing a lot of that here early on. The 17 makes his way off of pit row with a 7.95 pit stop time. Looks like a Scoffier might have been going for tires there with that long pit stop. Yeah, interesting call as we're getting down to, you know, 12, 13 laps remaining in the stage to make that move at this point. I wonder if things maybe aren't quite responding the way he expected or maybe not as much in line with what the rest of the field is doing. So again, we'll be kind of waiting on these other guys to make their way down the pit lane. Ireland, Kalini, and Wilson, top three. Rhino Tool about to be put one lap down. He's currently in 21st. Jason Heaney is now back in this one, so I'd imagine it was a disconnection, as you were saying there, Jordy, but he is 12 laps down, so Heaney's going to need a... Oh, uh, well, about that, commentator's jinx. Yeah, seems like it might be intermittent here. We'll have to hope for the best here for the number nine. Oh, Ireland and Kalini and both down pit road. So is Charlie Sears. All right. I'd say this is like pretty much this pit window complete, or at least it'd have to be close. We'd still have five more cars to come down. And uh, wh why is it a Noel? <laughs> uh, his middle initial appears to be a so. Okay, Kyle A. Noel. That's an interesting. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, that's how it comes up on the uh, my electronic on the scoreboard grid. here. Yeah. Yep. Kyle A. Noel. That makes sense. We. It's a Noel. Yeah, and he's gone for hopefully a quick pit stop. I'd, I'd imagine he will soon. I swear, every time I look at that car. It looks like he's just carrying a hood that says LOL. Uh, he's going slow, though, no? Oh, yeah, now he's going in. We willed it into Whoa. existence. Hunter oh, Young. Yeah. Hunter Young might have... Uh, Hunter Young had to put on the brakes heavily there coming onto the pit road. But as I was saying there, uh, every time I look at Kyle, every time I look at Noel's car, I just see an LOL on the front. That's what my eyes are perceiving it as. Yeah, no, no laughing matter on this one. Those will see what the pit stops turn into for this uh, quartet of drivers. It's pretty much fuel for everybody. At this point, it seems rather logical that it would be inside 10 laps remaining in the stage. Just a bit of a splash and dash to get yourself to the end. Oh, look at this. Adam Wilson uh, with uh, potentially good strategy here is... Would you look at this? The top four are all back together for the race lead with coming to nine laps to go in the first stage. Side by side. It's a 17 and the zeros are three wide now through the tri-oval. Man, oh man, lots of different lines here. It looks like McCauley was about to get swallowed up here on 
Both sides, Kalinian with the dive down low. They get full use of that apron on the start finish straight. And with this beautiful sunset too, the visuals are getting here absolutely insane. Oh, is there smoke there? Somebody have an issue? I didn't see anything on the leaderboard. Now the 13's going to get a slingshot past the zero. Going into turn one. Will he try to clear him up? No, the zero has the better momentum. Exit momentum coming off a of turn two in the middle lane. I think he might have actually gotten a little bit loose there. Coming off the corner. The 21 trying to play a catch-up game here. So is CD Magrum. Don't know if we'll have enough time to maybe have a five-car battle for the stage win. There's a pack all the way back there coming off a of turn four. I believe Kalinian barely led that one. But now at seven laps to go. Yeah, Mangrum kind of in no man's Whoa. land in that uh, chase pack of one. As, yeah, Wilson tries to hold on to the back. It looks like he's going to. It actually looks like he's trying to get on the inside of Kalinian here out of that back straight. It's it's two cars double file for the top four here. Magrum trying to catch his way up. And again, because these guys are battling side by side, it's only slowing them down. And with Magrum all alone, that's plenty of time for him to catch up and make this a five car battle for the stage win. Man, oh man. And it's only the first stage too. 17 clears his way in between the 13 and the zero. 21 of Wilson still going at it down low on the zero. But again, Kalinian... Trying to be better with uh, corner exit speed. Corner, yeah, yeah, that's the way it put. Now five laps to go in stage one. And what this is showing, at least in the case of Mangrum, doesn't seem like the variances in pit strategies made a whole lot of difference here so far because Mangrum was one of the very first cars to pit, whereas the rest of the lead pack of four here they all pitted about six or seven, maybe even eight laps later in some cases. So Ooh. Mangrum, yeah, he's right there. He's definitely going to make this a battle if he can get within striking distance. So the 13 has kind of pulled away here. He's trying to get away from the rest of uh, this lead pack here. With, again, trying to use the middle to high lines to get that bare corner exit speed, although he goes right back to the inside as I say that. And then everyone else starts jumping up. And then, meanwhile, back here, Darcy Ford trying to defend the sixth place position over Higginbottom, Mercado. Jason Butler looking to get some nice points here, and so is Mason Tomlinson trying to fend off Kyle Knoll. Side by side now for second place. The 17 dives under the zero. Oh, and the wall oh. is Adam Wilson down the back straightaway. CD Magrum's going to take advantage of that one. And the number one Nordic Aluminum Toyota will take the fourth position. So that's one extra point for him. Moving up. I think Ireland might have even... Did Ireland tap the wall there too? I think it might have been a bit of a late look there. But I wonder if that was a little bit of a squeeze that Wilson experienced there on the straight. It was hard to tell from real time kind of when it happened but it looked like from what i saw anyway the 21 ran out of room but it doesn't look like it's hurt him all that much here as he's just at the tail end of that lead pack 17 trying to use the kyle larson line to gain that momentum off of corner exit but here we are coming to the white flag for stage one the number 13 Boot Hill Chevrolet of Jared Ireland leading the way, looking to continue the momentum from winning the playoff race last year. But here comes the zero of Kalinian trying to use the inside to get side by side along the left rear quarter panel. He clears his way in behind the 13. Will he go for the dive bomb into turns three and four? Will Ireland block? No, he won't. He's going to try and make the dive to the inside. Off of four. The momentum to the 13. Off the high side and to the green checkered flag. It's Jared Ireland getting the stage one win. Yeah, and I mean, well-deserved. Like He fought his way through from where he was as the caution officially flies. But yeah, the one of the aces of the intermediate strikes again. 
I just had a gut feeling that this guy was going to absolutely rebound from that uh, very, very uncharacteristic finish back at Daytona last week. But again, a super speedway. I mean, yeah, super speedway. As the sun is setting here at Las Vegas, it's looking like we're going to finish this under the lights. Yeah, well, I was going to say, you might want to check that other thing that popped up just to make absolutely sure we're good. And yeah, I forgot that button existed. Dang it. Still working out kinks, folks. Yes, we're still working the things out, multitasking. It's, uh... Ah! We're trying here, folks. And so, everyone now making their way down the pit lane. Ireland, Kalinia, McCauley, Wilson, Magrum, Butler, Ford, Higginbottom, Mercado, and Tomlinson. Your top 10 stage 1 finishers. And Jordy, what a heck of a battle it was for just the finish of the first stage. What the heck are we supposed to expect for the next two? Well, I mean, we saw a great battle in stage 1 last week. And that definitely set the table for what the rest of the race looked like. And... Yeah, depth of field. I've got no reason to expect anything less than a shootout here tonight where, you know, the stakes are only going to get higher and higher. And it's a dash to first place off a of pit road. The 17 barely going to get that one. Yeah, pace car didn't exist anyway. <laughs> <coughs> Jared Ireland all the way back to 10th after uh, all that. Again, remember, Ireland qualified uh, towards the bottom of the top 10. So, again, uh, his qualifying position won't be ideal in terms of uh, pit stops under caution or stage cautions, whatever it may be. But again, this guy was able, you saw how this guy was able to save the tires and make his way all the way up to battle for that stage win and get the job done. And we're going to be, and we're, most certainly going to be seeing more of that as this race goes on. Uh, now a couple laps into the second stage. Will the pace car lights go off? Not just yet. The number 17 still leading the way. Yeah, typically it's about a four lap window from what I've observed. In the meantime, might as well give a shout out to some of our sponsors here for the network and Kyle's Fried Chicken and Barbecue, uh, who again, the title sponsor of the NASCAR series this season and also for multiple races throughout the season, including, um, let's see here, uh, the May 21st race at Iowa Speedway, uh, the June 18th race at Indianapolis, the June 20 or the July 23rd race at Bristol. And then, of course, the season finale at Homestead Miami Speedway on August 20th. And then we got Rampage Coffee Co., who will be coming on for uh, round three next week on April 2nd at Phoenix Raceway. And also July 9th and 16th at Darlington and Watkins Glen. Piping Kettle Soup, obviously the title sponsor for tonight, and also at Charlotte Motor Speedway and Talladega Super Speedway. Forked River Brewing Company. Uh, they will be title sponsoring uh, Dover on April 23rd, uh, Pocono on June 11th, and that's it for them. And then we got Bangarang Hard Seltzer. Uh, they will be coming on for May 7th at Sonoma, uh, Autodrome National Monza on June 4th, and then the Chicago Street Course on August 6th, Nordic Aluminum. The sponsor that you see on the uh, car in third place there, the number one of CD Magrum. They will be the title sponsor for what looks to be the 200 on August 13th at Auto Club. And then, of course, GSG SG Vinyl 3D, who will be the title sponsor for Kansas Speedway on April 16th, North Wilkesboro on April 30th, Nashville Super Speedway on May 28th. And that's all from them. 
And then GTR is a team and a sponsor of the network. And then trackcams22.com, of course, that provide the uh, cameras here that you see that really help to enhance these broadcasts, these professional-looking broadcasts that we have here at the Canadian More Sports Network. So once again, thank you to all the sponsors and partners of the Canadian More Sports Network. I think it's a nice little strategy to uh, mention them twice, so we'll get back to them uh, later on when we get to uh, the good old Crank It Up session. But not just yet, we got to get back to some racing here and be able to commentate some uh, fantastic action here in the Sin City. <clears throat> Time for Stage 2 with the Diamond in the Desert. Green flag waving, 17 leading the way. Man, oh man, I still don't know how they managed to all avoid that pace car. That is like almost 100, or like full on 90 degree turn. A lot of cross racing towards the middle of the field here as Jared Ireland trying to make his way back up to the front. Andy Hurdle and Adam Wilson side by side for the fifth position. Jose Mercado up to fourth. 17 still leading the way. Might have been some wall contact from somebody there. Charlie Sears starting to fall back just a little bit back to 11th. Just a lot of jostling back and forth through the, these first couple of laps in Stage 2. I was going to say, speaking of falling back, we didn't really go back to check on Justin Belmonte after he went toward the back of the field, but it looks like he's 16th or 17th right now as soon as that leaderboard comes around. So whatever he was planning, maybe it's more of a long-term play here from the six. Indeed so. <clears throat> well, I, I was going to say, I didn't really have <laughs> anything else to rely on there. Uh, 17 and 0 <laughs> getting side by side for the race lead down the trial will lap 49 of 134 and again as you were saying with Belmonte he's trying to make his way back up after it seemed like there were some issues early on in the race right back at it again rookie versus veteran Kalinian in the middle Macaulay on the inside and then following in behind, Magrum, Mercado, and then Adam Wilson still right up there. Trevor Binns making his way up to the seventh position. Jared Ireland still back there in tenth, but he'll certainly be sneaking his way up. Still going at it for the race lead, though. I was going to say, I don't know how sneaky a stage winner is going to be necessarily, but uh, say he'll definitely be a factor by the end of this one. I mean, he already has been, but I think he will probably put a further stamp on this race before the end of the night. The four cars in here battling for what looks to be the seventh position. Bins, Ford, Tomlinson, Ireland following in behind. There's one thing I really want to say about this race so far, but I, I just... I don't think it'd be appropriate. <laughs> I mean, save it then. Indeed I will. There you go. But then it might flip around on me. Well, if there's a time where it becomes appropriate, then you go for it. And tragically, that might not be until the checkered flag. Or actually, that, that, that's a good and a, I guess a good and a bad thing. Yeah, just see how it goes. Exactly. Belmonte and Kyle Knoll, two sophomores, really close action here for the 13th position. But yeah, man, oh man, like compared to what we saw back last year in Vegas, we got the whole top 10 only about like a, in a bit of gap of a second or so. I don't think you'll hear anyone complaining necessarily. This is, you know, exactly what we want to see. Close racing in close quarters. And, you know, competitive from top to bottom. Hard to ask for much more. Although, what was it last year? We had a couple of races early on in the season where the first two stages were, like, just, just like, fine and clean and quote-unquote perfect. And then, what, the third stage was just all-out chaos? I'm kind of hoping that doesn't happen again. We'll find some wood. 
<laughs> now the 21's looking to join the battle here. Even CD Magrum as well. Nobody's able to get away from anyone. You know, I, w I was talking about the fact that we're not going to be at a super speedway until late July, basically August. And yet it's like we're watching another one of them here. We haven't left the super speedways based on how this racing's going. Hey, again, nothing wrong with parody like I was saying before. Would you look at that? The 64 starting to make his way up. He was at the bottom of the top 10. Now he's looking to make his way into the top five. Yeah, he has a way of kind of making his way through traffic. He's a guy that's, you know, kind of like I was alluding to with Ty Higginbotham last week. He's a guy that's able to keep a pretty cool head when he's behind the virtual wheel, so to speak. And you know, not a whole lot will phase him, so he can figure out ways to make things happen. That's kind of been the hallmark of his various success stories over the years. Indeed so, and it's been quite some time since he's been able to uh, add some uh, perfect accomplishments to the resume, and it's looking like on paper he might be just well overdue for uh, getting more again. Uh, back last year, again, NASCAR uh, was just trying to finish races and finish inside the top 10, maybe squeeze in the top 5 every now and then, get some valuable stage points. And then there was uh, IndyCar slash Dart where he was able to win the... Um, the third, yeah, the third annual uh, Indianapolis 250 on the final lap. Mm-hmm. Well, that's exactly right. Like, there's been, you know, flashes of it, glimpses of the brilliance, just a matter of ultimately putting it all together. Isn't that just beautiful? Yeah, hard to argue. About as scenic as it gets. I'm going to... <clears throat> I keep losing my voice, my goodness. <laughs> I was going to say, is this time for an impromptu crank it up to help you out, or what are we thinking? You know what? Sure. Trackhams22.com, crank it up, let's get her going. Especially with the side-by-side -side racing and a bunch of close double-file action uh, throughout the field. Let's go.
<laughs> it, it took you some time to see that, huh? I just saw that, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And so, yes, we are back here. Uh, good timing to get that whole thing done now as the pit window is officially open for the second stage. We saw Ty Hingenbottom, Andy Hurdle, Kyle Knoll come in for some early stops, and now we got other guys coming along here. The 17, 13, 64, 33, and 32. Um... Did we... That's a long stop. Hmm. I mean, we did Usually still... Usually that's associated with one thing and one thing in particular, but we shall see. We did see a lot of cars during that crank it up. Pound the wall coming off of four, so I maybe something to do with that. Uncertain. Uh, Jared Ireland, too? Yeah, that's... Penalties that's or interesting. something? Well... I say, I, I didn't want to say that word because, yeah, typically that would be the association, but you'd have to think if it's that long of a stop, yeah, something weird is going down. And it's funny, we were talking off mic, it felt like the stops were happening early, just the stage is absolutely blazed by. And we're on that number. Jimmy Kowski on pit road. Adam Wilson currently leading the way. One note I will... The, the one thing I'll keep an eye on here is the fact that Jordan Kalinian, when he was in his pit box, he went for tires. I don't know if he went for just the left sides. Maybe he went for all four. But that will be something to keep an eye on when everyone has cycled through. Because that might help him take advantage of some guys. Like if, if Ireland McCauley... Uh, and Wilson, like every, all the guys from stage one, all get back together. That could certainly make things interesting, but uh, it's lap 70 of 134, so again, 40 laps, stages one and two each. When Wilson comes to the line here, it'll be 10 laps to go in the second and middle stage. 21 has yet to, I believe, has yet to come down. Yeah, the top five still have yet to. So Macaulay currently leading the way in terms of those that have pitted. Yeah, and I guess the other variable here is obviously we're getting into the evening. Theoretically, if we were to, and I don't want to play remote producer here, if we were to theoretically bring up the track conditions, you'd have to think that it's getting a little bit cooler as someone just came in ahead of Macaulay. Um, yeah, if it track gets a little cooler, if it's very realistic like the desert, it should cool off pretty quickly, as a matter of fact, which should yield a little bit more grip. Could be a very interesting tire battle. Absolutely, as we have a lot of jostling back and forth Ooh. here down the back straightaway, almost three wide for... Uh... Well, there's, it's a couple different positions back and forth. There's one car coming down the pit lane. I couldn't exactly tell who that was. I think it's Jason Butler. That's what the it leaderboard is. says. Yeah, that's the leaderboard. Trust the leaderboard. <laughs> but the 17 still leading the way is Adam Wilson. Very slow coming through three and four. Yeah, seven laps here left in the stage. I wonder if anyone's going to try and stretch it. It would seem Hunter strange, Young. but it might be an interesting gamble. Yeah, we got Young, Belmonte, and Marini currently still having yet to go. Macaulay, I believe, unlapped himself, so we'd have to make a whole other lap here if he wants to catch up to these guys if they're not going to pit. So Hunter Young, I... Hunger Young and Justin Melmani looking to stretch things as. Never mind, the six is going to make his way down pit road. Might have entered a little fast. My eyes might be deceiving me there. But the 77 still leading the way as Adam Wilson just put himself back on the lead lab, I believe. Yeah, it feels like it was almost a last-minute decision from Belmonte to dive in. So 
We'll have to see if he was able to get down to the appropriate speed. See what the old leaderboard says. Uh, okay, he's coming is. down. So no one's oh. going to stretch it. Okay, okay. Makes sense. Just uh, went as long as theoretically they could. So that tells a bit of a story about the tire life, though. If they were able to pretty much get through this middle stage. So the 17 will make his way to the lead as Hunter Young's now coming off a of pit road. So it looks like the 17 with a good pit strategy here as second through a whole lot of cars here are all packed together. It would appear to be two through six. It looks to be the case. Well, the 17 is just over two seconds ahead of everybody now with uh, four laps to go in the second stage. So it's all the more likely looking like it's going to be the number 17 getting the second stage win unless a literal catastrophe happens. And I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. But <laughs> yeah, ultimately, it looks like it could be there. But look at that gap absolutely melting. Yeah, that's the thing, though. They're really catching up. Remember, too, I said earlier, the zero. I remember the zero pitted for tires. Mm, don't know if the 17... It's looking like the 17 didn't. Maybe a bunch of these guys... Maybe it's more than Kalini in that pitted for tires there. We'll probably have to find out as uh, we get to, you know, the end of this race. I was going to say, that doesn't explain the rest of the chase pack. I think Macaulay might have made a bit of a miscalculation in his pit stop. We'll have to see. Yeah, I said the I said potential good strategy until I I, I couldn't tell if the the gaps are really uh, decreasing there or not. But then at some point it just boom, boom, boom. Numbers were just ah yeah they were closing as the seventeen got loose off a of turn two. There goes the zero down to the inside to take the. Race and stage lead. So they're coming to the white flag for stage two. And yes, I remember to click the button this time. <laughs> and now it's just a question of how Corbin McCauley hangs on for this last mile and a half to preserve a few stage points here. This Magrum Nolan Hurdle are catching him quick. They only have two corners to try and beat him to can maybe get at least... Nine points, at least Magrum will try to. To the inside he goes on the zero, or sorry, the 17, but to the stage checkered flag, it's going to be Jordan Kalinian getting the job done. Oh, there was contact coming to the line for second. Yeah, I think McCauley just held on. I think Tomlinson may have held on for the 10th and final spot. But it looks like... Magrum is staying ahead of the 17. We'll definitely have to get a replay on that one. Or will the 17 go ahead? Uh, I'm watching back on YouTube. And let's just see what we've got here. 17 is staying ahead. Yeah, that was my first thought kind of to the real-time eye. Because, yeah, I'm watching it back here. Kalinian clearly crosses first. Ooh, I don't know. Well, yeah, I'll definitely go back. But it looks like, based on the order right now, it is Jordan Kalinian, Corbin McCauley, C.D. Magrum, Kyle Knoll, Andy Hurdle, Jose Mercado, Adam Wilson, Ty Higginbottom, Darcy Ford, and Mason Tomlinson. That will be your top 10 stage finisher. So Kalinian gets the stage win. 10, 10 stage points, one playoff point. And so, we're going to go back. Yeah, this is a photo finish here for sure. Briefly, Mangrum did go ahead of Macaulay on the board. It's just a matter of who got to the line first. So we'll see which angle will work here. There's the number one dives down to the inside, and then there was most certainly contact coming to the line. So Mangrum's ahead at this point. 
And... Oof. That's too close almost, to call. You almost need a camera right at the line. Uh, we need an angle. We need an angle. Uh, Whew. hang on. I'll figure this out. Yeah, okay, we're coming. Uh, we're on our way. We're on our way. I don't want to get memed. We're on our way. <laughs> yeah, so both down onto the apron at this point. I'll see if I try to pause it perfectly. No, damn it. <laughs> oh. Man, oh man. Oh, there? There it oh. looks. <laughs> it looks like Macaulay might have just gotten back. I'm ch Oh, the flag stand's blocking that. Oh my gosh. You had oh, it. Oh, there, there we go. There we yeah. go. I think that's about as definitive as we're going to get. So I think that explains it. That was, I know it wasn't a race finish as we see some of the lights coming on here. Indeed. But, uh, yeah, that's one of the uh, tighter runs I have seen over the course of the five seasons we've had. And so, yeah, the replay of everyone coming off of pit road, the 17 wins the way again. And as we get back to live here, Macaulay leading the way, lap 84 of 134. So it'll be about just under 50 laps or so of racing to the checkered flag. And again, more than likely just one fuel window, unless again, we get a couple of cautions. Again, these first two stages have gone Besides the stage cautions, caution-free, zero incidents. Although, again, maybe Sears and Heaney got involved in stuff that we didn't see. Who knows? But from what we've been able to tell so far, and judging by the leaderboard, it's been... There's a word that begins with C I want to I want to say, but no. Oh, there's a lot of C words that'll get you in trouble. Yeah, no, not one that... <laughs> it'll, get me, <laughs> it'll get me in trouble if it's a jinx. I'll put it that way. True. That'd be the other C, commentator. <laughs> Looking at the race summary so far, two cautions, 77 laps under green with seven laps under caught. Wait, is so we had a row with the sevens. Then we have the sevens there. It is Vegas. What kind of an omen are we getting here? Uh, well, if you're Hunter Young and Andy Hurdle, maybe a positive one? We've had 11 lead changes, which is, for this kind of track in racing, has been phenomenal. Five different leaders. Jared Ireland with the fastest lap so far on lap 54, 29.5, 185 miles per hour. Um, again, you know, the sun is set. We got the lights on all over the speedway. 22 degrees track temperature. So, can only imagine there's going to be a lot more grip here for these drivers, which will make the racing all the more ex exciting to an extent. And again, I don't know how the dynamic forecasts link up to real life, so to speak, for those watching at home i'm not watching from iRacing directly but uh yeah if it's anything like real life this place should cool off fast but the action's about to heat up again rigs indeed so about 50 laps or so to the checker fly at the 17 leading the way he gets quite the jump there on the restart magram and kalinian side by side for second Probably the most uh, clean air Macaulay's had so far. Well, outside of that last pit window. But off a restart, that's easily the best jump he's had out of our three you know, standing starts, or rolling starts. So. 
So far, so good for the 17 still, but going out there for the second position, almost contact between Mercado and Tomlinson. They might be three wide. Oh, well, they were almost three wide going into turn three. But lots of good battles towards the bottom of the top 10 and through the rest of the field. Yeah, I don't think we can be surprised by any of this, though. We talked about the level of competition we've seen from the field, like in our first race in two stages here. So, yeah, none of this comes as a particular surprise, and it feels like, you know, a good chunk of the field is still very much in this. Absolutely. It's all, again, like how the first two stages went, it's going to be all the more strategy game here to the checkered flag but then again we got an extended 10 laps or so oh, oh, oh tomlinson gets loose through turns one and two saves the car can you believe no oh, ireland's gonna oh, go around the back oh, straight oh, away oh, oh, oh. caution and will he save oh, it yes he does he does save it i don't think anyone else was hit but is that gonna just clear or are we stuck for three laps because again usually these caution windows they're three or four laps so hopefully yeah I remember last year <laughs> indeed so let's get a replay there of what just happened there with uh, start with the 04 yeah, Tomlinson just, well, thanks building for that, but... Uh, <laughs> I was about to say. Yeah, he uh, takes the inside line. Yeah, oh, contact oh, with Ireland. Ireland. Oh, and then O'Toole gets in the back of the 13. Yeah, so definitely contact Yikes. to trigger that. Great avoidance from everybody else. But if Jared Ireland's going to be a factor now, like I said he was going to be earlier, he's going to have to pull some tricks out of the bag, but he's done it on intermediate, so even though he's gotten hit, don't count him out. Yeah, Tomlinson, uh, just a bit of a tap there along the white line, the apron, and just shot his car up. And Ireland right into the back, and then the third team with an unreal save here. Really thought he slid up the track there. Just praying that no one was just going to slam into him. And a couple cars came close, but thankfully everyone able to get by that one pretty safely. Hmm, now, the fact that there was, yeah, Tomlinson gets loose there, as you saw, yeah, great avoidance from everybody else. But yeah, Thomason getting a little bit loose, as I said. Um, I wonder, I'd be curious to see who did what tire-wise in stage two. Because if that was a slip, that could maybe open a couple of eyes. Potentially so. Oh, we got someone pitting. Let's see, on the leaderboard, that is the 77 of Hunter Young. Okay, this could be interesting. I wonder... Well, it feels too long for a fuel window to get him to the end, though, right? Because we were talking, like... 20s roughly for fuel windows I thought Young is going for all four tires okay I wonder if he's going to try to go to the end on that set then we did see guys go 34 35 laps in stage two and of course still like maybe another lap or two to run under caution yeah might get the benefit now a little bit colder track, a little more grip. Might be able to see it through to the end. But that's a big ask. Uh, 
Again, remember all the talks earlier about the number sevens. Potential omen there. Who knows? Maybe Hunter Young will steal this one outright. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be very, very interesting to say the very least. I wonder if maybe he's banking on one more caution. Well, yes, there we have had that. We, we remember the pattern last season when some of the intermediates were like, you know, the first two stages on average would just go smoothly and just speed by. And then yep. stage three, uh, you could describe it in any way. Mayhem, chaos, anarchy, all the above. Uh, yeah. Are we about to see that here tonight? I don't know. It feels like we're about to find out as I see the lights on the top of the pace car are off. Indeed, the 17 and the 1 on the front row for this restart with Kalini and Kyle Knoll and Andy Hurdle rounding at the top 5. Adam Wilson, Jose Mercado, Darcy Ford, Jason Butler, and Trevor Bins inside the top 10. Again, you like uh, the journeyman... Uh, and guys like Pirtle, Four Butler, and even Mercado were there as well. They've all been quietly performing pretty well so far. Especially a guy like Butler, too. Yeah, I mean, usually you do see him maybe a little bit further down the field. But, hey, sometimes quiet will get the job done. Pace car dies down to pit road a little close to the 17 there as they come to the line. Green flag 17 again with another good jump there. It looks like there was a bit of a checkup through the field. Yeah, I mean, Holly again couldn't have asked for much more off of that particular restart. And yeah, again, I wouldn't be surprised to see him kind of get swallowed up by the fields. Again, obviously not as powerful as it would be at, say, Daytona, but nobody's giving a whole lot of room, it has to be said. Like, nobody's letting anybody get away is more of the context I'm looking for there. Indeed. So the top four, five, actually, single file, starting to separate a lot from this, uh, starting to separate just a little bit from uh, this... Packer Racing. Here's Justin Belmonte slides up into the wall off a of turn two. It's just it's been quite the uncharacteristic day for last week's runner-up in the GTR 250. I mean, again, still plenty of racing left. But that number six, I mean, especially to the number 13 and Jared Ireland's all the way back here as well. He's been dealing with some stuff quietly off screen. He was, of course, just caught up in that accident that triggered yes. this caution. Yes, that too. That doesn't help. No, and it looks like Tomlinson rejoined in 14th, or at least that's where he is at the moment. Go figure, gets... the two guys from Eudora, Kansas getting together. They weren't close enough as it is. Side-by-side <laughs> uh, side for the fourth position. Kyle Noll and Andy Hurdle going out into turn one. Hurdle almost, I looked like the seven was almost going to slide up into the side of the 15 there. Yeah, able to hang on for now, though. Yeah, all in all, pretty disciplined run, I think, is probably the best, cleanest, non-jinxy way to put it. About that, the 13, uh, almost, I think, almost experienced the same thing the L4 did. It was right along the uh, inside line apron, and then the car kind of bounced up. Well, again, the 13 was the victim of that happening to the L4 last time. And then he experienced it himself, but he's able to keep the car straight as now the number six of Justin Belmonte, again, slapped the wall off a of turn two, but he's starting to make his way up as if nothing happened and try to charge up towards the top 10 where Jason Butler currently rounds it out. And then there's, again, the top two GTR 250 uh, finishers last week in Higginbottom and Monty. Outside the top 10, still plenty of racing left as they're three wide. Tomlinson very close to Marini through three and four, still side by Ooh. side for the 14th position. 
Meanwhile, up here is basically a single file train. Yeah, guys just seem like they're getting settled in here for the most part with, uh, well, now that we've hit triple digits on the old lap counter. And Darcy Ford then clapped the wall off of two. And then yeah, but still going in the right direction. And that's all that matters. The 17, meanwhile, uh, the 17 is just looking in this rear view mirror. They all, the, all those cars in behind him just hoping that the gap in back behind them, Kalinian got loose. Through oh, one man. and two, almost three and four wide. Cars jostling, scrambling back and forth and behind. Andy Hurdle almost in a panic through three and four as they're three wide. Okay, I wonder if this is where Kalanian maybe gets bit. We don't know what he did in the caution window pit stop, but we know he took tires late in that green flag pit stop on stage two, which ultimately helped him get the stage win. I wonder if maybe he's kind of getting bit by that now. Three wide back here as well. Butler was almost squeezed down. Belmonte had to go up and almost squeeze into Ford. Higginbottom sends the 64 up the racetrack. Still three wide racing up here. I would love to see a replay of what happened with the zero, but these guys are just not letting me have it. Yeah, I, I think you'd probably miss too much if we went back. That's the problem. <laughs> it's a very good problem to have, though. This race is just too damn good. Exactly. Scramble mode. Scramble mode. Scramble mode. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, now the one thing I would say... we. You'd have to think we'd be getting close to that final green flag pit window now, assuming nothing else happens between now and then. Again, find some wood to knock on or something. Should be here. All right, let's see. Double zero. No, not this slap. The next one, maybe. Yeah. Looks like there might have been a bit of a touch there. Yep, there it is. Ooh, Magrum kind of saved him. Just kind of touched that white line, it looked like. That was about it. And then it was just a scramble from there as we get back. The number six very loose off of two. It's been almost an Achilles heel for him throughout this race. Yeah, but he's making his way up the board, isn't he? He's eighth. Again, it's, as, that's as you say, a car may hit the wall or get loose or whatever, but they're still going in the right direction. And he's given a bump in behind the number 33 of the rookie Trevor Bins. As Kyle Knoll, I thought, was getting a shove from Andy Hurdle there. Oh, Ben's up and into the wall. There might have been contact with the 21. Three wide. Was about three wide there down the back straightaway. Now on lap 106, coming to 107. Well, the 33 squeezed the six up. Man. Yeah, I would have to think, probably looking at the next five laps for that final pit window. Unless guys have figured out how to stretch it out a little bit. And now Jared Ireland's starting to crawl his way back up the leaderboard. I told you. Not <laughs> out of it. Down but not out. Yeah, I mean, even don't look now. Like, Tomlinson 13th, still not in the worst position. Maybe not getting back up quite as quickly. I'd have to look at the board to actually confirm that. Jason As Butler. A, we got a pit stop. Jason Butler, the number 10 bangerang Chevrolet on pit road. So he's the first one to come down. Three wide down the back straightaways. He's in his pit, going to his pit box. Ireland almost sliding up the racetrack there. Uh, Butler. There were tires at least. Four, yeah, four tires for Butler. Kyle Knoll now making his way down. Yeah, Just I had said five laps for this pit window. I think I may have meant five turns. <laughs> and somebody else as well. That's Tom Janikowski. Noel's going to go for right sides. We'll see if he goes for... I imagine ever, literally everyone's going to go for all four. Noel does. I was going to say, if 
there was one guy who wasn't going to, it would have been the 15. Andy Hurdle, Hurdle checks now. In. Yeah. See, so yeah, it's around 15 seconds or so for a uh, four tire and fuel pit stop. If it's just fuel, it's about half that. Yeah, we'll have to see how this goes. Seems like pretty routine here for Andy Hurdle so far. As, yeah, we've got a few more coming in behind him. That's three rookies Wilson, uh, Tomlinson, and Bins. With Sears checking in behind them. At seven laps down, so he's, he's he would need a lot of cautions to get back in this one. Yeah, that might be like you know nuclear testing site almost level of destruction <laughs> that would be required. I mean, it is Nevada, so he's probably not far away from one. I mean, you got you got to preach these guys though for still sticking it to the end and still trying to get as many valuable points as possible. Well, I mean, we saw how close it got at the end of last year's regular season. Like, it literally came down to the final lap to sort some things out. Well, I mean, yeah, Jason Butler ba barely squeezing his way in on points uh, at the Daytona regular season finale. Uh, thank goodness Rockingham will be hosting it instead uh, this season. But the thing is, though, too, it's going to be our first ever time in the series going to Rockingham, so... That's the other thing. It's like, yes, it's not a super, it's not a chaotic super speedway to end it off, but it's also a track where a lot of these guys are going there for the first time. So yeah, it's a curveball, no doubt. There's going to be chaos in different ways. It's caution. Oh, what do we have here? Jordan Kalinian around in the tri oval. Oh, I uh, Jared. I, oh man. Oh, don't hit him, guys. Don't hit him. Oh, there he goes. He disappeared. This changes everything. That's two race can that's two contenders right there. That's both of the uh both of the stage winners. And that's involved. right off the end of the green flag pit window as well. So, decision time. But what it, what on earth would have happened? Well, that's the beauty replay. Let's find out. 17 and the zero are nearby each other. Was it the zero trying to get down pit road? Uh, oh, yes, oh. it was. Oh, oh man. Oh. oh, man is right. Oh, oh. Man, what in the world? Escoffier oh. into the 13. Oh, surprise. Man. It's surprise after surprise. I did not mean to go live. Yeah, that, that was, was the a, wrong uh... button. That was the wrong button. There we go. Hang on a second. We'll I'll get back. Yeah, I hope we got a steakhouse booking after this because that was as textbook a T bone oh, as you're going to see. Oh, nowhere to Man. go. Up the track, Escoffier coming in the background. Yeah, boom. Ireland on his side. Literally nowhere to go for anybody. Yeah. Like, yeah, Scoffier couldn't have avoided that. I'm just looking back at it and, on YouTube, and is this his on board? This is the 13's on board. Okay, yeah, this might be fun. For anyone who suffers from dizzy spells, maybe avert your eyes. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. On board with the 63. Yeah, Saturday night, Sunday morning, it was the 63 that ended up on oh, its side. Oh, that is race. terrible luck. Ooh, yeah. Like, at that high a speed, it would have taken, you know, some significant skill to get out of the way of that one. And on that high line, just diving down like that is that's a huge ask yeah 
Yep, bang. Interestingly, on that replay, did you happen to see just who was coming into pit lane? Would have been none other than Corbin McCauley himself. So, cheaper pit stop. May have gotten himself some position here, potentially. I mean, he was at the head of the field, but may not be as punitive of a pit stop is what I was getting at. And that's uh, quite the heartbreaking angle there. Two races in a row, the number 13 would have had all the speed in the world, but just tragic endings. Yeah, it looks like we're still under the yellow here. As uh, Yeah, you were saying they're the 17. Yeah, the 17 was trying to make his way onto pit road there, and then the caution came out. So... Yeah, the timing's interesting. Mike Marini also benefiting from that. Again, too, a bunch of these guys uh, would have been down pit road under the uh, caution there while we were under the replay. So uh, because of that, I'm actually might as well just replay it back to when these guys were on pit road. Well, the lion's share of the field had just pitted under green. It was coming to the end of the window. I do want to see here some of these guys, what they may have taken j just, just in case. Just yep. to keep in the back of the mind. Higginbottom, Young, and Macaulay made their way down. Young, that was a guy that we looked at earlier. Remember lap 91? He came in for four tires. I said at the time, he's probably praying for a later caution. He got it. So Higginbottom looks like he went for four. Young as well. Macaulay looks like he went for 4-2. Yeah, all three I of mean, them. If you're looking at a 15-lap dash, why not? Well, yeah, he's, again, too, looking back at the laps since the last pit for a lot of these guys, uh, the top four all have two, la two laps since their last pit, and then a bunch of other guys, 6-4, four, four, seven, five, five. So the tires on uh, some of these guys up front at the front here will just barely barely have better uh how would you put it traction grip whatever yeah insert word here yes uh i thought the lights were off that time around but no it's going to be probably this time so it's looking like it'll be a 16 lap shootout to solve this season's piping cattle 200 at las vegas motor speedway uh looking at the race summary so far we have 102 laps under green four cautions 15 laps under caution Ever since when we last looked at the race summary, there's only been one more lead change. Uh, six different leaders. Jason Butler now at the fastest lap time with a 29.543 on lap 97. Yeah, and some of the uh, back chatter here. Yeah, just a little bit of a uh, an issue with pitting there, as you mentioned, off of the replay with the Kalinian that ultimately triggered that. Rookie mistakes. Well, I mean, I don't even like the term rookie because, I mean, we've spent all this time hyping up the I rating, right? And, you know, these well, things, yeah, network you know, they happen. Yeah. And, yeah, now I feel like this is going to be broken record territory, but Mr. Consistent finds himself at the head of the field again. And we have most of the field restarting single file. Interesting. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Young is the only car on the outside. Green flag. We'll see how much these guys spread out. As it looks like a couple of the guys checked up too towards the back. Yeah, Rhino imme tool. immediate separation there between that first and second pack, like you say. So... Definitely somebody missed time something there. As we're talking about that, Ty Higginbottom, Corbin McCauley side by side for the race lead. The 17 looking to get his first win of the season. Higginbottom, on the other hand, looking to go back to back. Is almost three wide. I thought Magrum was going to go in the middle. Three wide through the tri oval. The Tornado Alley invasion up against the 17. Yeah, that's. Ugh, being in the middle of that, I don't know if that's where you want to be, but. If the uh, 
If there's one guy who can handle it, it would be that number 97 U.S. Air Force vehicle here as he comes down that uh, appropriately named Nellis straightaway, which for a little bit of context for the viewer, the local Air Force base right around the track is named the Nellis Air Force Base. And Justin Belmonte's made his way up here to the top five. You were saying, I said down but not out, and then you were just saying too, multiple times, this car still kept straight despite many wall hits, taps, kisses, whatever. And I mean, he's the guy who can win at Anders as well. Indeed, we even got Andy Hurdle still up here. Darcy, like pretty much all these guys up here in the top 10 have been able to stay consistently up towards the front. Maybe not Belmonte as much, but he has slowly crawled his way up and where he's positioned right now is at the, at the time where it matters the most with 13 laps to go. He's battling for the second position. Meanwhile, Macaulay, but again, three tenths ahead or so. Yeah, just finding that separation that he needs here right now anyway. And if we judge off of last year's uh, Las Vegas race, at least the first one of the two that we had, Macaulay looking to go back to back. But, yeah, then, I mean, but then you got four, five, six, seven, eight cars charging at him. Make that nine. Yeah, this one's not over yet by not, any stretch of the imagination. Not even close. But the thing is, too, all these guys back here might want to make sure that they don't battle too much themselves so that they can actually catch up to the 17 and make a race or, yeah, a race for the win happen. Well, I mean. It's funny, we were, as you said earlier, we were talking about how long it's going to be between speedway tracks. It's almost a speedway strategy here at the end. Like, it's a matter of picking your spot. As you say, you're 10 or 11 laps away from the checkered flag right now. But, yeah, just a matter of making sure you're in it at the end and then, yeah, make the opportune move when it presents itself. And as you're saying that, Magra making a move on the inside. Belmonte going to follow in behind. Who's he going to choose? He goes in behind the one. Three-car battle here for the race lead and the race win. A lot, Again, a lot of these guys, too, pretty familiar with each other after last week at Daytona. Macaulay, was he? It, yeah, he's going to clear the way. The 97 with a huge run through the tri-oval. As you said, this is not even close to over. And if you recall, eh, let's call it, what, 20 minutes ago, Mangrum and Macaulay making contact at the end of stage two? Indeed. Is Mangrum going to return the favor, if that's a way to put it? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if it would necessarily be that. I think it would be more classified as hard racing, as it was in the first instance. And discipline-wise, that's the way it should be. Absolutely. But the thing is, too, Macaulay has had the advantage of the middle to high lines for better corner exit speed, and that's better on the tires. Magrum, meanwhile, has just stuck to the inside. So if they can find a way to get to the high, to higher lanes against the 17, then there's still a chance. And again, too, if any of these guys up front get together, Higginbottom, Andy Hurdle, Hunter Young are all ready to pounce and again yeah the sevens are right there together that's what i was laughing at yes. <laughs> yes i had a feeling that's what it was yep there's belmonte on the high side over magrum as i thought her higginbottom and hurdle were about to get together there along higginbottom's left rear quarter panel but belmonte has cleared the way for second and now he's got a familiar foe in the number 17 to chase with six laps to go and at this point like if anything happens oh, with that lead man. six the guy in seventh could be ready to pounce. So the seventh team might not be over just yet. And then if all of these guys get together, then there's uh, Mercado. Well, that's who I mean. <laughs> He's ready and waiting. Yeah, this kind of has shades of auto club last year. 
Indeed it does. It's just a matter of can the 17 hang on, which based on how these laps have gone, consistency-wise, the 17 has been able to keep about a 2-3 to three tenth gap over second place on back so far. But then every now and then, too, they get right up to him, and they go for it. So, again, the 6 and the 97 are just... If they start battling each other, that's only going to pull the, that's only going to send the 17 sailing away to the win. And they'll be coming yeah. to three laps to go this time around. Now they're going to be side by side for second place. As I was saying there, if you want to catch up to the 17, help yourselves out. Yeah, and meanwhile, do we potentially have an internet issue with Kyle Noel as well? Don't know if you saw that message. Yeah, there's no sign of him. Yeah, that would be sort of your late game indicator here, unfortunately. Higginbottom Very is an opportune time. Higginbottom has now cleared his way into the second position. 17 still pulling away by about three tenths or so. Now at two laps to go. There's not a whole lot of time for the 97 to try and catch up if he wants to win back-to-back -back races. But you never know if the 17 might just screw up. <laughs> I'm sure he would love you saying that on the other side of his wall. But uh, <laughs> the point I was going to make is, yeah, they're just not quite packed tightly enough to mount a bit of an assault here as we're coming up to the white flag. White flag, one lap to go in the 2024 Piping Kettle 200 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Macaulay looking to win at this track two years in a row, winning the Sin City, the Diamond in the Desert, but will Higginbottom be able to catch him? Yeah, if he's going to do it, he's got to find a massive run into three and four. It doesn't look like it's going to be enough, so coming off of four, it'll be his first win of the season, the number 17, Boulder Motorsports and Kawasaki Chevrolet to victory lane in the Sin City at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. He clinches his spot in the fifth annual Earl Ross Cup playoffs. And obviously he felt a little bit of heat from Higginbotham there at the very end. Just that little dive onto the apron to make absolutely sure the 97 didn't get a run. Expert run here from the 17, it has to be said. He's been toward the head of the field pretty much the majority of the night. Really, the only bobble was toward the end of stage two. But he was the guy to beat. Nobody could do it. And yeah, we were kind of joking around there that sure, I'd love to see him, the, the guy on the other side of my wall, screw up in some capacity. Uh, but the thing that I do love is the fact that he's getting challenged. That's what I want to see. And I mean, we felt like that was inevitable there just with how you know the field is tightened up on the iRacing side of things. But yeah, ultimately... The performance has been there still for the 17 and yeah, took two races instead of, well, I think it was actually three last year. So he's clinched earlier. Indeed. So he can be relieved of any stress, just like Higginbottom now for the next 13 races. And again, too, we're more than likely going to be seeing this guy in victory lane many more times with again, this, uh, Next, like, 15, 16 races or so not being on super speedways. That's going to make it all the more fun for the 17. And again, based off, based off how he did last season as well, like, you're going to be seeing this name, this car, all this, more than likely many more times as the season goes on. At the same time as well, though, we're going to a lot of new tracks, uh, at least in the within the iRacing era. So, he's familiar with most of them. Probably all of them, but again, up against these guys, he's most certainly going to be challenged just like he was here tonight. Yeah, I don't think there's a question about that, honestly. It was not a runaway by any standard, just a consistent performance from green flag to checkered. And so now we get the unofficial race results here tonight in the Piping Kettle 200. The 17 of Corbin McCauley getting the victory. I don't know exactly where that put him for uh, career wins in the series. I do have a uh, a sheet somewhere. but I, I uh, want to say it's in the 18 range. It's probably Maybe somewhere 19? like that. It'd be something like that. I'd... 
Uh, I'd have to pull that up somehow, but uh, I guess I'll mention it. I might, I'll probably mention it in the, the post later tonight or tomorrow. But anyways, the number 97 of Ty Higginbottom and the number 6 of Justin Belmonte find themselves kind of uh, not 1-2, and two, but they're still pretty close together there after going 1-2 and two at Daytona last week. They go 2-3 and three this time around, still ending up on the podium. So a hell of a start to the season for those two, especially Higginbottom as well. The number 6 kind of more towards the back throughout the race here, but he was patient, kept the car straight, made his way up to the front in the late parts of the race and got the job done there. C.D. Magrum finishing in the fourth position. Andy Hurdle rounding at the top five. A hell of a performance by him there. And the sevens just continue on there as Hunter Young with an absolutely impressive run in the sixth place position. A very consistent performance by him. Also to Jose Mercado, Adam Wilson, Darcy Ford, and Trevor Bins. Also with very consistent performances here at Las Vegas. All of them pretty much inside the top ten throughout the entire race. And then the rest of the way, we got Mike Marini just outside the top 10. Ryan O'Toole in 12th. Mark Ouellette with a solid 13th place finish. Tom Janikowski rounding out the field, or the lead lap uh, part of the field in the 14th position. Mason Tomlinson, Jason Butler each one lap down, 15th through 16th. Kyle Nolan, 17th at seven laps down. He was in it for a potential top five finish until it seems like he went dealt with a disconnection there. Charlie Sears in 18th, seven laps down. Just the bad luck just really... Continuing for, uh, again, the only driver in uh, network history so far to have a pro license. Jason Heaney in 19th at 11 laps down. And to round it all out, Steve Escoffier, Jordan Kalinian. Or, I should say, the numbers are messed up. Escoffier, Ireland, and Kalinian. That's the actual order. Uh, all three of those guys getting caught up in the one big incident that we had in this race here tonight. Ireland did have an incident uh, earlier on. As he and Tomlinson got together, the 13 was able to save the car. And then, of course, later on, not even close to that, a very, very big crash. And that unfortunately took out all three of those guys right there who all, at least Kalini and Ireland, certainly had the speed for a top five finish, maybe even a win. But just a lot of bad luck on that end of the... on that end of the results. And so now we will go back to the booth here one last time. Jordy, uh, two week in, two weeks in a row, I almost said two weekends, damn it. Uh, two weeks in a row here of some pretty classic solid racing here on the iRacing platform within the Canadian Emore Sports Network NASCAR Series powered by Kyle's Fried Chicken Barbecue Season. So Ty Higginbottom and Corbin McCauley are the winners here so far this season. The 17, again, just another race where he really, really got challenged by a lot of these guys throughout the field. And it just goes to show, yes, we're going to be seeing the 17 a lot more times more than likely here at the end of these races at the checkered flag, you know, with that little on the ticker there, race winner, the first car across the line at the checkered flag. But we saw how close a lot of those guys came to beating him. And if we see a lot more of that throughout this season, man, oh man, we're, we're in for some uh, pretty solid races as this regular season continues on. And it'll only continue heading into Phoenix Raceway next week as we uh, exit the month of March and enter the month of April. And I guess, thank goodness that, um, that uh, it is the day after April Fool's Day that we race. Yeah, I mean, I think tonight demonstrated that, you know, the Daytona caveat doesn't really mean anything, does it? It feels like, you know, there were battles throughout the field, battles right at the top. And, you know, as you say, there was a challenge from start to finish. And yeah, that was something that, admittedly was lacking a little bit of points last season, but yeah, I think ultimately we are kind of in a spot where, you know, we keep trumpeting the parity of the field. I think tonight's proof of concept. Absolutely. It has. And uh, now we might as well go back to the, onto the racetrack here. So we can get an interview here with the number 17 of Corbin McCauley, Jordy, I assume just another case here. Well, you'll just, Send me a question and I'll fire it away. Well, I think Corbin may have actually pitched doing it on Discord. Interesting. So, yes, we'll figure out the technical issues here as we progress or technical routing, not necessarily yeah. issues yeah. as we see what the upcoming schedule looks like. Yeah, I might as well get a bit of a view on that as uh, we... 
try to get in communication here with uh, Corbin, but yeah, uh, the West Coast swing comes to an end next week on April 2nd at Phoenix Raceway, uh, and then uh, in two weeks' time, it'll be our first uh, run in the I- within the iRacing era at the Circuit of the Amer- at the Americas, going from the West Coast to the South Central, I guess is the way to put it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Deep in the heart of Texas there with Coda, certainly. Unless I'm off by a week, because I know I'm off that week. Indeed so. So, uh... Okay, looks like I... Should be it there. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get you to mute yourself in video, and then you can get yourself in Discord. You got a copy here, Corbin and Jordy? I hear ya. Say that again, Corbin, just to make sure. We're all good here. Uh-oh, can you not hear me? Uh, I can hear you now. Okay, we're good, we're good. Yeah, just trying to sort things out here, but it looks like we should be all good. Just had to make sure it all made sense here. As you can see now uh, on the broadcast here, race winner, the number 17 Chevrolet of Corbin McCauley winning the Piping Kettle 200 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Corbin, you won. Here are two years in a row, and uh, I could see there behind the scenes in some of the, the group chats. Uh, I'm not surprised you uh, you must have certainly had your heart pounding in that one with about, uh, I don't know, six, seven, might even even eight cars there chasing after you for the race win. And uh, I said to Jordy earlier, too, like the one thing, uh, obviously, you know, there could be that brotherly joke of uh, wanting to see you screw up. But no, the one thing I do want to see is you getting challenged, and you certainly were here tonight. And you still got the job done. What a peck of another performance here once again. Just talk about <laughs> just talk about how uh, how much your heart is pounding. Um, I can hardly breathe, so um, that's awesome. Um, that was the most challenged I've ever been in this league. Um, I just can't put it into words how tough that entire race was. Um, to be on the winning side of it is extremely lucky, honestly. Um, I didn't mess up on pit road, so... Uh, the street continues. That's race number two <laughs> on the season where I've not pit, sped on pit road. So thanks, Jordy. Um, yep. And uh, yeah, no, I just, I, I can't remember being challenged like that in a race before uh, battling Jordan, Jared, CD, Ty. I mean, like, my God, like I, I damn near battled every single person in the top 10 today. And uh, gosh, I, I just, I can't believe how lucky I got on that last caution. Like uh, whenever I came to pit road and then Jordan spun uh, towards the outside wall and, um, that could have really screwed me over had I've already been in my pit stall or if I've already been closer to my pit stall and done the pit stop. But uh, when that caught, when I saw him in my mirror wrecking, uh, that's, that's the moment I said, all right, I just got to keep going down pit road. And uh, so that's what I did. I came down pit road and then did my stop under caution. And uh, that was kind of the point of the race where I was like, Oh, I might not get this kind of thing. But even through, through the whole thing, it was like, that was one hell of a battle. Absolutely, it was there. <clears throat> Almost, um, I am losing my voice here. Good lord. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I can only imagine too with uh, this like one next. Uh, obviously, now thirteen races remaining in the regular season, but another about sixteen or so until we get to the next super speedway. Although the way tonight went, it pretty much could have been considered a super speedway race because holy moly, like the leader just could not get away from. Pretty much anybody there, not even uh, whenever everyone cycled through all the pit windows there and everything, but just uh, now that you can kind of, you know, be relieved of stress moving forward for uh, the next little while or so up until about July or so, that's when the playoffs begin. Uh, I imagine you're uh, definitely going to be relieved of some stress now with a uh, secured playoff spot, uh, but knowing you, you're still going to want to go for many more wins as uh, as we come down this next stretch too. Like we got Phoenix Raceway, we got Circuit of the Americas, we got Kansas Speedway, a bunch of uh, mixture of tracks like short tracks, intermediates, road courses, something very unfamiliar uh, in comparison to what we had last season. So uh, again, too, with a playoff spot secured, you're all good up until about July or so. 
I bet you're. I imagine you're uh, looking forward a ton to uh, what's about to happen next year within the Canadian U More Sports Network NASCAR series. Man, I'm so excited for all the variety of tracks we have now. And uh, one race I'm really looking forward to in a couple of weeks is Coda. I cannot wait to get onto the road course. Uh, it's something we haven't done since the heat days. And let me tell you, road course racing and iRacing, racing, it's it's like nothing else. It's it's. It's really fun. It's fun hauling a stock car around a track that a stock car shouldn't be on. But um, I'm happy to be locked into the playoffs, but obviously that doesn't change anything for me. It's not going to change the way I look at things. I still want to go out there and win. I want to make points. I want to get playoff points. I want to exactly. get stage wins. You know, just all of the above. Like just Because last season I went into the playoffs with a massive advantage of playoff points, and that's uh, that's certainly what I'm going for this season. But uh I, I will be the first to say, I, or probably not even the first to say, I'm not going to have as many playoff points going into the playoffs this year because of just how damn competitive this field is. And I mean, it'd be a shock if I went into the playoffs with as many points as I did last year. But uh, no, the, the the competition's incredible. Uh, we've had two races, two different winner, winners. Uh, it would not surprise me if we kept that streak going of a different winner every week. And who knows, like with with the amount of races we have in the season and only 12 guys making the playoffs it could it could theoretically come down to points so that's that's where i need to uh that's where i need to gain them up and uh keep keep it rolling you got anything for him jordy and i was gonna say i was just gonna jump in on a particular point you talked about the level of competition and especially tonight but from my vantage point that looked like one of the more consistent drives that You've had over the course, especially of the transition over to the iRacing platform over the last two seasons. So talking about that overall consistency and you mentioned the need to still stack up as many points as possible. If we dive back into tonight a little bit further, what was you think the biggest key to consistently being in that fight for you in terms of whether it was no strategy, keeping a level head, whatever other factors might come into play for you. It was definitely uh, a lot, a lot of uh, keeping a level head because last season I remember there were mo moments where I'd get flustered and I'd overdrive the car and you know speed on pit road, all that kind of stuff. But uh, tonight I took it kind of easier. I, I let's just say tonight I didn't go into it as stressed out as I typically would. Uh, so like last year, every race I'd be like kind of just jumping off walls and bouncing and like, just like, I can't wait to get going. And then it would just having that energy would kind of put me over the edge and I I drove or drive the car and just wouldn't race very good. And then tonight I just kind of came into it level headed. I, uh, geez, like an hour before the race, I went to the grocery store. I got myself some stuff for tomorrow. got myself a lunch, got back to the computer and, you know, just did some practice laps and, uh, wasn't really too worried. I just went to, went into it with a open mind and I said, well, if I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. And uh, honestly, just going into it like that helped me out immensely. I didn't speed on pit road. I kept the car clean. Uh, I did use up my tires a little bit in some of the earlier runs, especially at the end of stage one. But that all is in learning. And by the end of the race, whenever the track got cooler and uh, the, the sun went down, I could just push the car as much, at, uh, much more than when the sun was out. And uh, I always uh, I, I shine whenever you're at, whenever I'm able to push the car to its limits and uh I, I can save somewhat, but I can't save as good as a lot of the guys in here. But uh, when it comes to pushing the car all out, that's that's when I shine. And uh, yeah, it was it was just a, it was a good race and uh, very crazy competition. Like that was that was fun. Is is one word I'd describe it as. Yeah, and it looked like it from start to finish. You mentioned the uh, eating up of the tires. Is that kind of what happened at the end of? stage two whenever Kalinian was able to get by you there or what was the ultimate factor there still second or third whatever the photo finish wound up being still a great finish in the stage just a little bit out of character considering the rest of the evening so just looking to dive in a little bit deeper on that one yeah so at the uh the stage two uh so basically what ended up happening was is when i came down pit road i didn't end up taking tires because uh I had this gut feeling that maybe the race had become a caution fest in the third stage. And I decided I'm just going to come in for fuel, top off, don't put any tires on it and go. And uh, I also thought it would give me some significant track position, which it did. I think I was like seven or eight seconds ahead of everyone else. But uh, I think Jordan and uh, CD and Kyle and all those guys, they they ended up taking four tires. So that that was a significant speed difference. I think they were about six or seven tenths faster than me every single lap. And that's, that's how much the tires mattered tonight. So, uh, 
keeping them uh, keeping them fresh and keep it, and not overdriving the car was certainly a uh, strategy element tonight. Um, but whenever uh, wh- whenever they uh, put those tires on, they were just significantly faster, and uh, that's what ended up costing me that stage to win. But uh, it's funny, even still, like we uh, we reduced our tire sets to four, and uh, I'm still sitting here with a set of tires remaining in the pits. Something to be said for that. And speaking of things to say, I will throw it back to Reg with more things to say. 10-4. Thanks. Thanks, Jordy. And yeah, you're, yep. sa- you're saying you're looking forward to a uh, code in a couple weeks time. Uh, and you weren't, you know, struck with uh, obviously any penalty luck this time around. Hopefully the FIA doesn't come and invade us uh, that that week. Oh, God, don't say that. <laughs> uh, we Again, we still got two weeks until then. Uh, you got any brief? Are going to get a five-second time penalty for ke- getting into someone? Uh, you're you're going you're gonna, to, like, by inches, cut one of the, the corners and just... Oh, man, yeah. I'm going to get that blue and... Or, sorry, SV, black SVG and white black. style. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just to conclude this, do you uh, just uh provide some maybe some brief details on uh what you're looking forward to at uh phoenix raceway uh and uh just take the time to just i guess thank people thank the partners especially there on the card too because uh i know that's uh that scheme in particular uh might be something similar that uh people on prince edward island uh, oyster red speedway fans may see when you go racing in the uh, mini stock division yeah for sure so phoenix next week it's uh it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be one of those races where um you know, it's it's I don't really know what it's going to be like because we've never been there on iRacing in the series before. So uh, that's one thing I'm excited about about this season is going to places we've never been before and uh, seeing how that all works out. And uh, you're, let's just say you're you're you're, you're going to be in for a show when it comes to restarts and uh, all that stuff because of that big dog leg. We're going to be stretching out five, six wide. It's it's uh, can't wait to see how that goes. Hopefully it goes clean. But uh who knows? You never know, right? But uh, no, Phoenix is going to be a good race. It's also at night, I believe. So it's going to be nice and grippy and, you know, you can push the car. So I'm, I'm excited for that one. And uh, yeah, so the the race win tonight, it, uh, it wouldn't be possible without uh, Bolger Motorsports, uh, Kawasaki, ARC, Carpentry and Flooring. Um, you know, all the uh, students at Colonel Gray Senior High School that are currently in the process of building my car. Uh, it's coming along quickly. The roll cage is welded. It's just all the little things that have to be done now, just the little details. And uh, you know what? It's almost April, which means we're getting to that time of almost getting that car out onto the racetrack. And uh, it's coming real fast. And I just I can't believe that it's going to be happening. So uh, thanks to all of them. Uh, glad to have them on the iRacing car. And I can't wait to have them on the real car as well. And uh, yeah, so that's that's basically it. You heard it here. First, from the number 17 Chevrolet of Corbin McCauley with Bulger Motorsports and Kawasaki Holland College and uh, a bunch of green and black there on the his... ARC Carpentry and Flooring. And them too. Uh, on that bright and beautiful number 17 Chevrolet getting the win in the 2024 Piping Kettle 200 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. He becomes the second of 12 drivers to clinch a spot in the 5th Annual Earl Ross Cup playoffs. No doubt. In our minds, we'll be seeing this guy in victory lane many more times as the regular season goes on, but with how challenged he was here tonight, hopefully we'll be seeing plenty more of that as the season goes on. Once again, Corbin, congratulations on the win. Go, uh, I think if I say go celebrate uh, well and safely, that uh, is going to be completely violated knowing you. But anyways, uh, congratulations and uh, best of luck the rest of the way. We'll see you next week at Phoenix. Well, my celebration is going to consist of saving this replay, uh, exporting a report, uh, you know, uploading points. So uh, that's that's my celebration. But uh, as always, thank you, Regan and Jordy, and uh, we will be seeing you next week. Indeed, we will be. Cheers. See you later. And so that was the post-race interview with the number 17 of Corbin McCauley. Jordy, any final thoughts here before we wrap things up? I mean, I think Corbin pretty much touched on anything that I would think of. Obviously, yeah, he alluded to the different elements of, yeah, Phoenix next week, obviously new to us on the iRacing side of things. Um, 
it's a different track in and of itself anyway. So it's going to be like, like any other track, it's going to pose its own set of challenges. Guys can obviously get creative off of that dog leg. And, you know, we've seen guys who are willing to take chances and, you know, do whatever it takes to make that move up the field. I think we might be in for one again next week. Absolutely, and we're going to be in for plenty more as the season goes on here for the fifth season in the Canadian More Sports Network NASCAR Series powered by Kyle's Fried Chicken and Barbecue. Tonight was round 2022, the Piping Kettle 200 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. You'll catch us back in action for round 3 of 22 at Phoenix Raceway on April 2nd. The Rampage Coffee Co. 250 gets underway here on the YouTube channel at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 8.30 p.m. Atlantic. Under the lights once again, just like we were tonight in the Sin City, the Diamond in the Desert in Las Vegas, Nevada. And so Corbin McCauley, the number 17, getting the win here tonight. He becomes the second driver to secure a spot in the fifth annual Earl Ross Cup playoffs. So with all that being said, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for listening and watching Tuning in to another live production of Canadian Need More Sports Network action powered by Kyle's Fried Chicken and Barbecue. It was season five of the NASCAR series at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Catch us back in action next week at Phoenix Raceway. Have a good one, folks. Take care. That was Regan McCauley, Jordy Carraher in the broadcast booth. And on behalf of everyone else at the network, take care. Have a good one. We'll see you next week, April 2nd. You will not want to miss any of 